Recently, I've been kind of reevaluating my ministry and uh, the one the Lord gave me and, and just kind of going back and saying, okay, what was, what was my original intent with this whole thing? Because it's certainly grown beyond my original intent. <laughs> and uh, I think a lot of people might not know either uh, what my purpose is. You know, because I'll get this thing people say, you know, where's your church at? Uh, well, first of all, I don't, there's no a, where is your church? I am part of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the church. So to say I have to have some local building or something like that that people can come visit and whatever, okay, that's not scriptural. There are local assemblies of people around and things like that. I mean, I can point you to, you know, different people contact me and they say, hey, do you know somebody in this such and such area? And, uh, you know, there's different websites out there that can point you to different groups of Bible believers out there, local assemblies of Bible believers that know each other and can help and stuff like that. I mean, we're still, you know, have a long way to go to organize that thing. And I don't know if it's going to be fully organized before the catching away of the bride of Christ. But the point is, I know Christians in certain areas of the world have uh, been contacted by quite a few thousand people over, over the last 10 years. I'm a tenured uh, ministry preacher. <laughs> Just a little joke there. But <laughs> I've been doing this thing since 2007. So 10 years now. This will be my 10th year in ministry, 2007 to 2017. Didn't plan the thing with the number seven. Okay, so don't get excited. But, uh, you know, because that's the number of completion. But in the Bible, book of Revelation, number associated most with God and everything else. It just... That's when the Lord called me into the ministry, and here I am 10 years later going, wow, you know, Lord has showed me a lot. I never intended it for, you know, I never thought it would get to this level. Um, but what was the original intent of King James Video Ministries? Because that's what this is. This is not um, Husky 394 XP. Originally, I just thought I'm going to have a YouTube channel, put up some logging videos, see how that goes. So I named the channel after my biggest professional chainsaw, Husqvarna. 394 XP. Okay, the 94 is the CC. I forget what the 3 designation is, but you know, XP, it's a professional level chainsaw. And um, it's a big saw, 94 CCs. Actually, bigger than my first dirt bike I had when I was 10 years old, but that's another story. But uh, King James Video Ministry started out, um, uh, where is it? Right here. This is literally the first DVD I made, right there. Okay, um, video quality was terrible. Uh, the print quality of this is terrible. Um, it was not a very good production. Not like what I do today with the Lord's help. Um, that uh, eventually I redid it, and it became this. This was a DVD I had for a while. It's these are available. Not that one because that's really bad but uh you know this is now available on my channel you can watch that and then that turned into uh where's the, the next one do i have a copy of it here someplace uh, i can't see it right now but um ridiculous bible perversions of the new age is what it was but then this one here the real bible version issue exposed showing the jesuit catholic connections to the new versions um that's where it went after that. And then, you know, I started to put up some things on YouTube, took this logging channel, Husky 394 XP, and, and uh, I kind of thought at first, you know, should I have my name on here and whatever. So I just left it Husky 394 XP, started putting up ministry things, and it really took off, and it was like, okay. Prayed about it. Lord's kind of like, oh, you know, prompted me to, to, to uh, you know, start making videos. And at the time... I was part of a small house church down in Pennsylvania, Bible Believers Fellowship, and um, that, uh, I was doing audio stuff, audio sermons, putting them on sermon audio, quite a few of those, and uh, a lot of those aren't even online anymore, uh, most of that stuff is gone, of course we got kicked off sermon audio, <laughs> but whatever, I don't really care about that, but I uh, um, had a sister recently uh, make a suggestion that maybe I should redo one of those old audio sermons as a newer video sermon, you know, put some newer information on it. So, you know, a lot of those audio sermons are going way back to 2008, 2009, 2010. So I uh, might do that. I'm not sure yet. I have to pray about that. But um, 
just to explain something. If you're new to this ministry, if you just clicked on this video and what's this whole thing about, let me explain something which is very important for you to get. Okay? The Bible version issue. Just give you a very brief synopsis of this thing. Uh, I'll do it this way. Okay? Why do I talk about the Bible version issue? Well, because you have, I'll put this in my right hand, you have the Texas Receptus and you have the Nestle's text. Okay? They're not the same. This one is based on less than 1% of all extant manuscripts, Greek manuscripts. When they find an old Greek manuscript in an old temple or somebody's possession or whatever else, less than 1% of the time it will line up with the, this type of reading. Okay? This one over here, it's over 99%. Over 5,000 manuscripts. Back this one up, less than 50 over here. Okay? So, and this one mostly comes from two of the supposed old, oldest and best manuscripts, which just logic should tell you if they're really old and they've been around for a while, it's because people aren't using them. You know, newer copies mean people were using the older ones and the older ones wore out. Obviously, most people don't carry around 400-year-old Bibles, okay? If your Bible's more than about, you know, I mean, this thing here, my faithful preaching Bible, I had this thing since about... I don't even know, 2001, 2002, somewhere in there. Probably about 2002, I'd say. And this thing here is taped together. It's got duct tape in it and stuff. Only the finest binding materials, you know. But um, this one, this Nestle's text, is used, this, this 28th edition, by the way, this is the newest one. And this is the Texas Receptus. Um, this one is used by the Vatican. This one is used by primarily by the Greek Orthodox Church. The King James Bible is not a perfect translation of either one of these. Okay, it's not that the King James Bible comes completely from the Receptus. I'll get that thing sometimes from people. Well, you know, it doesn't follow the Receptus perfectly. Uh, no, the King James Bible was created um, by the most brilliant scholars that ever lived. There was 54 at the beginning, 47 by the end of the seven-year translation time of 1604 to 1611. Okay. And these men, they used ancient translations, Latin translations, uh, different uh, Romance languages and things of, of like, uh, I think that would be northern France. Um, there was a lot of different languages, ancient, you know, other language editions. I think they used Martin Luther's Heilige Schrift, the, uh, you know, his holy scriptures there is what that means. Um, they used a lot of different foreign language translations. They used um, the Texas Receptus primarily. Uh, there was different editions. Again, I need to clarify that. The Textus Receptus, they say Erasmus wrote it. Well, technically, Erasmus compiled some of the first editions of what later became the Textus Receptus. Okay, there was Stephanus, Beza, you know, or a bunch of different editions of this. Later on, the Elzever brothers came out after the King James Bible had been published in 1611, and they came out, I forget the year, but they came out and... They called it the Texas Receptus, which means received text. It's the text that uh, non-Catholics have uh, used. Okay, And you date, you go back with these, a lot of these manuscripts, you trace back their lineage. It goes back to a Syrian Bible, you know, Syria, Antioch, where they were called, the disciples were called Christians first. This Nestle's text, on the other hand, goes back to Alexandria, Egypt. Okay. Not a whole lot of good coming out of that area. Now, it's important to understand that there is a difference here and to understand that our King James Bible was a masterpiece and it is the greatest work of literature ever in the history of the world. Um, that's why you know we stick to it, but it's more than that. Um, because as Christians, we have a Holy Spirit within us. And the Holy Spirit of God, He can show us, He leads us into all truth. And so as a Christian, you'll find the truth here in this King James Bible. The Holy Spirit will bear witness to this book. You pick up the new versions and it's like, eh, it just doesn't seem right. And you compare the new versions with the King James, you can see that there's a definite agenda in the NIV, the NASV, the ESV, ones like that. There's a definite agenda to remove vital doctrines. Um, for instance, the King James Bible will say that you are saved. The new version will say are being saved. Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I think, is where that one verse is. Um, there's a whole lot of things like that. Um, they conveniently take verses out because the Nestle's text 
has removed verses from the King James Bible, from the received text. Okay. Uh, again, the Nestle's text, the Nestle's, you know, they'll say about the two oldest and best manuscripts. Those are uh, called codex, codices in the plural. Um, Aleph and B, Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, or Sinaiticus, or, you know, people, oh, he said it wrong. Shut up, okay? <laughs> you know what I meant. I mean, good night. There's, I've heard people, scholars say either Sinaiticus or Sinaiticus, or, you know, they, they always, these little scholars come up with their special little way of pronunciation, you know. And everybody doesn't say it right, and they, they, they do this little effeminate laugh thing. James White does it all the time, but another issue there, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, the, the translators of the King James Bible also had this thing right here. This is the Reims New Testament. This was put out by Jesuits. The Jesuits order founded in 1545, I believe, and uh, by Ignatius Loyola, De Loyola, Ignatius of Loyola or Ignatius. Again, say it either way. I really could care less. Ignatius, he's burning in hell right now, so I don't care about offending him or any of his followers. But uh, 1582, this... Roman Catholic English translation. The first Roman Catholic English translation came out. This is the one put out by the Roman Catholic Church, or Roman Catholic publisher, I should say. This is the one that has all the footnotes. This thing comes in four volumes. This is just the New Testament. I got three volumes up there of Old Testament. All right. The translators had access to this. So a lot of these quote unquote modern readings that what they didn't have back in 1611 because they were just so primitive and stupid. You know, and the NIV is more up to date and all this other stuff. Uh, these guys had access to it right there. And I have a whole video showing that the new versions are not really new. They're just, you know, ever since the, the completion of the New Testament, there's been a war going on between the pagan Roman Catholics and a lot of the true believers and Greek Orthodox, which I don't consider them to be true believers. But again, that's another issue. <laughs> but there's been a war going on between the real Bible, and the fake Bible, okay? Fake Bible, real Bible. And it's funny because the Chaloner revision, they actually had to make this thing. They had to update the, the Reams, well, Dewey Reams. They had to update the whole thing to make it sound more like the King James Bible in the 19th century. But the point is, my purpose is not to get into a lot of the Greek and the Hebrew and, and debate over this this mind-numbing, so boring, you know, uh, well, you know, like a John MacArthur came out, you know, with this book, this idiotic slave book, it's called, you know, on the doulos, doulos. The Greek word doulos should always be translated slave, and they, and they argue over all these little fine things. I've studied textual criticism. I have a lot of books on the thing, both for and against the King James Bible, too, I might add. I've studied this thing. Okay, I'm not a dumb bunny on this thing. I'm not some dumb hillbilly, uh, at least on this issue. But uh, I know the issue. Okay, I know all the little arguments back and forth. Do I memorize that stuff? Can I just get into a big debate with somebody and just spout off lots of facts and figures? Eh, some of the stuff they might get me on, I'd have to get, refer back to a book or something. Because, you know, to me, it's like I want to memorize this. Because this is what I've used for years and years and years, both behind the camera on the street, preaching, teaching the Word of God. This is the book that the Holy Spirit bears witness to, not the other junk that I have down here. I have a lot of new versions, too. I'm not afraid of the new versions, okay? And as I've said in another video, I'm not King James only. I'm a King James Bible believer. I regularly, routinely use the new versions to show that they're wicked and satanic. Yeah, absolutely. So my purpose is... To cut through all the scholarly mumbo jumbo of of the what should this word be translated as and and actually we found this manuscript here and P66 has said this and well yes but P75 has reinserted the reading for the, you know do you have God's word you can call this King James Bible you can call it God's book and you can faithfully use this thing God will do great things for you and show you amazing things in this Bible. Watch my preaching and teaching, and you'll see the Lord will bear witness. And I've seen that thing so many times, I can't even tell you how many times in the comments people were like, yeah, I was reading the Bible like a month ago, and I came across that very verse that you just preached, and I thought, I wonder if that ties in with this over here. A month later, I'm preaching it and saying, look how it ties in. You know, 
the Lord is revealing things to you and then through me. And a lot of times you're, you know, you're writing stuff in the comments and I'm looking going, whoa, I didn't see that, you know? I mean, that happens all the time. It's a, it's a wonderful relationship and it crosses ethnicity, it crosses age, it crosses male, female, whatever. We share the same spirit. So you're going you're gonna to experience that, but only if you believe the King James Bible. If you're a new versionist, you're not going to get it. Your new version goes back to the Roman Catholic Church, the most wicked, satanic, corrupt system on the planet. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. Purpose number two, the, th the second purpose. First purpose is defending the King James Bible. That's how I started out. That's why it's King James Video Ministries. Okay. Second purpose is to defend the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away. Falsely called the pre-trib rapture. Okay. That's not a Bible term. The pre-time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, catching away. Right? The Bible talks about being called up to be with the Lord. So we are going to be called away before the coming time of Antichrist showing up, signing the peace treaty and stuff like that. I know that there's, I heard uh, Brian Donovan, I think, um, is teaching now that he believes that the church will be here to see the Antichrist show up. I don't agree with that at all. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way and then shall that wicked be revealed. All right. Um, and there's other arguments I could have as well on that. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is teaching that the body of Christ is going to be leaving before the Antichrist can show up. And you see that. I mean, that's what happens in the book of Revelation. John picturing the body of Christ, the disciple whom Jesus loved, you know. And again, I've done this in many studies. <coughs> John goes up before the first seal is opened. And when he gets up there in heaven, there's the 24 elders seated out of every tongue, people, kindred, nation. And then there's a great multitude of angels, which in the resurrection we are as the angels of God in heaven. So I believe, and you read back in Revelation 19, and John's talking with an angel, and the angel says, you know, he bows down to the angel, and the angel says, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant of thy brethren. You know, okay, so I believe that we are angels, and there will be 24 elders chosen from the body of Christ. I believe that, and again, another little thing I've talked about in another study not going to get into a big thing here, but there's 12 natural boundaries where God just you know, says, okay, you're from that boundary, there you're from that. And I believe if you look at it that way, and it says plainly in Revelation chapter 5, let me just go to the verse, give you the exact quotation here. Um, <clears> Through <throat> the 24 elders, there's been all this debate, you know, well, it's 12, the 12 apostles and 12, you know, what? no, it isn't, because Revelation chapter 5, verse... Uh, Nine, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Can't be the twelve Jewish disciples, okay? Can't be. And then twelve other Jews or something from the Old Testament. Uh-uh. Not going to happen. And it tells you plainly right there, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, God rec recognizes twelve different boundaries, sets the bounds according to the number of the children of Israel. All right, back in the book of Deuteronomy talks about that. So it's crystal clear the body of Christ is in heaven before the Antichrist is unleashed in Revelation chapter 6. So I disagree very strongly with Brian Donovan on that um, and anybody else that would teach that. I'm not singling, signaling, singling him out. I'm not getting it out yet. But the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away, um, it's coming very soon. And, uh, I mean, we're seeing this whole thing of this, the two-state solution and the peace plan and all. They're really focusing in on Israel now, and it's like the Palestinians and the, all the other Arabs are out there going, you know, if you dare put move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, there's going to be a war. Well, you know, I saw the one Palestinian president said a while back, he said, we're going to open the gates of hell if you do that. You know, well... It's going to happen, okay? Um, I believe that Donald Trump being Jesuit trained, and there's a lot of Catholics and Jesuits within his whole system. Uh, you look at the Crusades that were fought back centuries ago. The Knights Templar, um, they're very, 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 they wanted to get that temple mount there in Jerusalem, and they still want it. They still want to build this third temple thing. 
And again, you know, I saw there was a thing, you know, Google Maps, I think it was. You go to the Temple Mount area or whatever else, and there was like people were showing that you go there and they already are showing pictures of the rebuilt third temple. You know, like computer generated images and stuff of a rebuilt third temple already there on the Temple Mount. It doesn't always work and stuff like that. You know, I tried it a couple of times and the one time, you know, it was I think it worked, but the other times it was like, eh, it doesn't work. Interesting. But you get into the whole Masonic, all this other stuff. And I saw, again, somebody, one of you posted a link that in March, the uh, Vatican officials will be meeting with officials in, you know, from the Israeli government talking about giving more land and, and exclusive rights to the city of Jerusalem to the Pope, where the Pope can walk freely and, and whatever else. Prophecy is being fulfilled. Okay, the preparations for the third temple, the, all the stuff that the Jews are doing, the red heifer and this animal and that animal and this special harp and the menorah and all this other stuff. Priestly robes are made and all. It's like we're this close to this whole thing happening. So um, that's why it's very important. And the teaching of the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away. That's another purpose of the ministry. That was something I actually learned about and got interested in the rapture issue before um, before I even got into the Bible version issue. I knew I was studying the rapture issue back and forth on whatever, and I was, I was discussing it and arguing the points and stuff with people back before I was even saved. Um, I mean, it was that pressing of a thing. I was a false convert, uh, modern evangelical, you know, CCM kind of a, a rock and roll Christian. Yeah, okay. But, you know, the rapture was a very big thing to me, and it got to a point where I was thinking, you know, oh, 1993, you know, is going to be the thing, because then you'll have seven year, at the time I was calling it tribulation, seven year tribulation in 2000 starts the millennial kingdom. You know, I was raised with that understanding, you know, the whole evangelical modern church movement, and um, wasn't even saved the whole time. Pretty ridiculous. I was doing all kinds of stuff that saved people don't do. And, uh, you know, whatever there. But uh, so it's been a big issue. And it actually led me to truly needing to be saved, understanding I need to be saved. Um, you know, so that's another thing there. But uh, that was a big, you know, uh, part of that has been a big part of this ministry, um, defending the pre time of Jacob's trouble catching away. And, you know, I have used the term pre trib rapture just simply because people know. They're familiar with that. But I've taught ever since the beginning that it's not actually called pre-tribulation rapture. So, but uh, that's the second purpose of King James Video Ministries, to provide answers to people um, and debunk all this post-trib Satanism stuff. And it is, by the way. Um, number three, and this is another big one, third purpose of King James Video Ministries has been to expose Roman Catholicism. Uh, again, when I was studying the Bible version issue, I started to see these tie-ins to Catholicism. I, you know, I was like, okay, I think that they worship Mary or something. That was about all I knew. And I started to realize, you know, I remember I watched the uh, documentary. Uh, do I have it here? Yeah. This thing right here. The Forbidden Book. I watched that, you know, and um, I think it's sold by Chick Publications. Mine originally, the first one I saw was VHS. Uh, it was before it was on DVD. Tells you how many years ago it was. And um, and I saw this part about these martyrs, these Christians being killed. And I just started crying. I mean, I was just like, it just shook me up so bad. And I was like, Lord, I had no idea. I was never taught this stuff. I didn't know people suffered like that. And I learned about uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs. I have a couple different editions of it. Um, here's one, Hendrickson Christian Classics. I know some of them, they've changed some of the wording and things. I think this is probably a fairly faithful reprint of the original Fox's Book of Martyrs. But reading that and things and just seeing this just horrifying torture that the Catholics did through the Dark Ages and then up through the, especially the Inquisition years and things, as after the Council of Trent and all that, I mean, it was just like, I mean, it just gives you nightmares, it just gives you chills, just the hatred that the Catholics have. And, they, you know, I've seen it today. You know, I've seen 
you get into a debate with a Roman Catholic, they'll get very, very angry. <laughs> I've seen the, the, the inquisitional fire in their eyes, if you could say it that way. And uh, you say, well, that was in the past, let it go. Okay, how about a 20th century example? Again, I've done a book review on this thing on my secondary channel. Um, you know, it just what they did to the, you know, Serbian people, the Orthodox Serbs in Yugoslavia, the forced conversions. I mean, it just, they just, oh boy, it's bad, it's real bad. And uh, again, reading this, reading Fox's Book of Martyrs, reading a lot of this stuff, seeing, reading, studying Catholic laws and, and teachings and things. I mean, I have catechism here, Canon and Decrees of the Council of Trent. The Church Teaches by Jesuit Fathers, uh, right there. Okay, and you go through this thing, and... Um, just to show you one page, this is page 195. Okay. On one page you have six curses to people that disagree with Roman Catholic doctrine. And there's all total there in this book. I have it here somewhere. Is it the very back page? Yeah. 252 total curses in this book written by Jesuits. 252 curses whereby they say, if you've done this, if you've done that, let you be anathema, you're cursed. And they were killing people, torturing people. Okay. I have a Baltimore Catechism different for different ages there. The Vatican II uh, thing. I have Luther's small catechism. You know, I got all that stuff there. Luther is just a papist. You know, I'm just going to reform the rotten system of Catholicism, yeah. Okay, but, uh, you know, I have the information. I've studied Catholicism, okay. I'll show you this one here. The Reims New Testament, the faithful reproduction or whatever of the, you know, 1582 Jesuit, first Jesuit created. Again, you know, I'm talking history here, folks. I'm not... I'm not just, oh, you're just, everything's Jesuits. <laughs> I get that. It's so funny. Um, chapter 17, the Apocalypse of St. John. We call it Revelation. And you have, chapter 17 is about the Roman Catholic Church. Here it says on page 557 in the footnotes, it says, uh, putting heretics to death is not to shed the blood of saints. Okay right there okay so their Bible 1582 Jesuit Bible says hey putting a heretic to death that's not shedding blood of saints they're just heretics and it says on the next page about you know it's you're not gonna have to answer for this any any government or anything else will have to answer for the, the thing of putting heretics to death so Catholicism Understanding the system of slavery that it is, understanding the, the just epidemic, I guess you could call it, of child molestation. And again, you know, I have a history, a background in the occult. I was very much getting into the occult as a teenager because of my Christian heavy metal, you know. Christian heavy metal, well, first of all, contemporary Christian music back in the 1980s drew me into Christian heavy metal. There's no such thing which drew me into the secular stuff. And I was listening to like uh, Metallica and Megadeth and ACDC, a lot of the 1980s heavy metal bands. Then I started getting into this, some of the harder core stuff like White Zombie, later became Rob Zombie. Um, and some of that stuff, you know, whatever. I never listened to Marilyn Manson. He's just a sick little pervert. But, uh, you know, I got into that stuff and I was also dabbling around in the occult. So having that understanding and then understanding what satanic ritual abuse is all about and looking and seeing what these priests are doing to these children and I'm realizing this is satanic ritual abuse and it's exactly what it is and understanding the torture system of you know right here the inquisition years and things council of trent all that other stuff the catholics are perfecting their torture techniques and the cia catholics in action central intelligence agency but more aptly named catholics in, in action the CIA 
uh, was founded by the Roman Catholics. William um, Donovan, I think the guy's name was, he was a Catholic. Uh, I mean, these guys are Roman Catholics, the Dulles brothers and things, Catholics. You know, they're, it's just right there. And the CIA was perfecting this techniques of uh, Monarch, mind control programming, MK Ultra. There's all these other code names for it and stuff. And they would torture people and fragment their mind and then program the different personalities and stuff and, and whatever. You know, and I realized, that, hey, this stuff's all tying together. And so the ministry, I talk about the Bible version issue, it's tied to Roman Catholicism. I talk about the rapture issue, it ties back to Roman Catholicism. So I focus a lot on Catholicism and I, and I bring up these tie-ins and things because they're there. You know, it's not my overactive imagination, okay? And I'm just sitting around, you know, uh, excuse me for being kind of blunt here, but I don't just sit around picking my nose watching YouTube videos all day, okay? You know, drinking soda pop and eating microwave popcorn, right? I don't do that, all right? I've done the research. I've done the study, all right? I am educated, all right? Which makes me dangerous to the Catholic system, which is why a lot of them hate my guts and try to destroy the ministry here. But uh, part of Roman Catholicism also, if you look at who developed the church buildings, organized religion, the whole organized religious structure, it goes back to Roman Catholicism. So the church building structure uh, of having the altar and having the special uniforms that you wear and the special temple that the people think is holy, and they do, every single one I've ever been to, they'll attribute holy things with the church building that they're in. And that ties back to Roman Catholicism too. So I did produce a video. I don't think I have a copy of it here. I think it's probably in storage. Yeah. Um, did produce a video on how to start a house church based on the King James Bible. And again, another purpose in me doing that was to get people out of the control structure of the Roman Catholic Church. They need you to be in the buildings under authorities that they have taught in their Jesuit-controlled seminaries. And again, I'm not making that up. Uh, most of these seminaries, they are, you go into the average uh, Christian seminary, Bob Jones University or Tennessee, uh, what's the one down there? Not, I'm thinking Tennessee Temple, that doesn't sound right. Dallas Theological Seminary, Fuller Theological Seminary, whatever else. They're pushing, pushing this text right here. This text, which has a Jesuit, I think he's dead and in hell now, thankfully. But this uh, right here, right above my finger, Carlo Maria Martini was a Jesuit, a Jesuit cardinal. And he's sitting on the uh, board of editors for the Nestle's text. So you have, I mean, it just all ties together. These seminaries are teaching their students that this is the best, most accurate Greek text available based on less than 1% of the extant manuscripts. It's really kind of funny. But, uh, you know, they'll attack the Texas Receptus, and if they use it, well, they'll still kind of, you know, oh, it's just outdated and whatever else. And, you know, and, and they'll get students in there, and they'll teach them Greek and Hebrew, but they'll, then they'll come out and say, this book's too hard to understand. It's archaic. You know, but you can understand this. You know, I mean, that's logical, you know. I mean, I can understand the text, and I can go down to the critical apparatus, and I can see which manuscript and what's reading and all. But you can't understand uh, King James Bible English. Yeah. So that's really the purpose of this ministry. Um, the mo most thing, it ties back to Roman Catholicism. And why? Well, because the Bible says that she is the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Revelation chapter 17. So all roads lead to Rome, okay? Everything ties back to that system. And uh, I hate Roman Catholicism, just as plain as day. I will never, ever join Roman Catholicism. If you want to get me into the system, you're going to have to drag my dead corpse in there because I'm never going to join it, ever, for any reason. Okay, I don't care if my life is on the line. I will not uh, back down on this issue of being against Roman Catholicism. Um, my hatred of Roman Catholicism is one of the things, the driving forces of my life. And one of the reasons I hate Roman Catholicism so badly is because when well, I think of little children being molested by priests and nuns and whatever else, 
and uh, they go to their church and the church covers it up. I hate a system like that. I don't hate Catholic people. I hate the system. I hate it with a passion, a driving passion. And that pushes me, it drives me. Even in my worst times of depression, I start to think about if I lay down the sword, the sword of the Spirit, if I lay this thing down and I just let the Catholics come in and take over this country, nope, not as long as there's life within me. I'm going to fight Roman Catholicism. I pray you do the same. But I just want to say a couple of things here. I, just about the way things are going right now in our country here in America and worldwide too. Um, I'm just going to give you what I believe is going to happen. Uh, the Jesuits, the purpose of the whole Jesuit order thing was they were started uh, for the express purpose of the Counter-Reformation. Uh, as people were waking up to the corruption of Roman Catholicism and saying we're protesting all the abuses, it's gotten so wicked, it's gotten so bad, we're leaving. As that was happening, um, they wanted to bring them back, but bring them back even in a stronger way. And that's, we are in the final stages of that, going back to Roman Catholicism. But before that can happen, they need to divide and conquer the people, which is exactly what Donald Trump is all about. Donald Trump is about dividing and conquering. A lot of what he's doing is good. I'm just going to say that just right off the bat. A lot of what he's doing is good. He's trying to bring jobs back to America. The Muslim travel ban thing, you know, oh, Islam's not terrorism. Yes, it is. I mean, good night. Again, read the Koran. <laughs> they're, they're terrorists, okay? And, you know, so we'll compare it to the Old Testament. Uh, the Old Testament, you're not going to find one place where God said, hey, go in there and kill that nation uh, or convert them. You're not going to find that. There's no forcible conversions in the Bible, okay? It doesn't happen. Okay, the reason God was saying go into the Jews in the Old Testament and kill those people there was because of sex perversion. Right? Why? Because sex perversion will always go to the, they have to get sicker and sicker and sicker and more and more perverted, and they eventually go after children. So God in His mercy and His love says, I'm going to stop that thing from happening there. Go on in there and kill those perverts. That's what's going on there. But Donald Trump is dividing the nation right now. Right? He's being used to divide the nation. And God put him in there in, in that position of authority and whatever else. And, you know, I'm not a liberal dummycrat or something like that that's saying we should overthrow him and start our own nation. or something. No, no, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you have to step back as a Bible-believing Christian, get behind the, get away from all the propaganda of the news media and say, okay, how is this thing going to play, in, play a part in Bible prophecy? There is no restoration of America. There's no, you know, great revival right before the Antichrist shows up. It's not there. So what's going on? Well, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 6 that the Antichrist goes out conquering. Back in the book of Daniel, he, by peace he'll destroy many. He comes in peaceably and obtains the kingdom by flatteries, and then he goes out and he starts slaughtering people. Well, here's my theory. Roman Catholicism right now is led by two duds, okay, on the surface to the average Catholic out there. You have Pope Benedict, the ailing little, you know, uh, zombie that he is, you know, walking around and, you know, stuff, you know, he was, he was always weird. I'm just look, uh, looking at the guy and I'm like, the guy's like, like a living devil walking around. And I have no sympathy for popes, by the way. But Pope Benedict used to head the office of Inquisition. They call it something else now, but... Again, that's another story. So, And he's part of the big cover-up of all the child molestation and everything else. So again, he's disgusting. And Francis, first Jesuit pope. So you get these two wicked popes, and they're doing all kinds of terrible stuff. You know, the pope just here recently, just like yesterday or something I saw, he came out and he said, uh, there is no such thing as Muslim terrorism. There's only extremists within the system. So, oh, come on, please. And he's telling people, oh, you know, you're saved, you're a Christian. If, if atheists are good people, they're going to heaven too, and he, all this other stuff. That's not the teachings of Peter in the Bible. So the Catholic Church is totally illegitimate. And they know that. The average Catholic looks at the modern-day Vatican, and they say, this thing is wicked. Okay. Um, more on that later on another video. But they can look at it, and they can say, this thing's wicked. What do they need? They need a new, younger pope to come in and just shake up the Vatican and say, okay, it's time for major reforms. It's time to make this thing change. 
and that HBO, you know, miniseries. I thought it was a movie. No, it's a miniseries. You know, um, I'm, I don't watch television, so I'm out of it with a lot of this stuff. I wouldn't watch that show even if it was on, but whatever. Um, this young pope, you know, bring in a young pope, the Antichrist, and he'll come in and he'll say, okay, we're done with the corruption. We're done with this Islamic thing. Uh, we're tired of Islamic terrorism. Let's start the next crusade. We're going to rebuild the temple here. Uh, and we're going to have the Christian, you know, holy city here of Jerusalem and things. And, the, and you know, it's, it's just all being played up for this. And so the integration thing, the Muslim invasion of all these different countries, they're basically putting the Muslims in place so that, you know, again, I know Eric Phelps has talked about this. And there's issues I have with Phelps. You know, I'm not saying I totally agree with everything that the guy says, but I think he knows about the Jesuits very well. Um, but he said that he believes that in some point in time in the future, they're going to destroy Mecca, Medina, you know, all these Muslim holy sites, and maybe even the Dome of the Rock. Just blow the whole thing up. And the Muslims are going to go absolutely nuts because they'll blame America or something like that, white people, you know. And, and the Muslims are just being spread all over the place. I'll tell a story about that in a minute. And, you know, the Muslims are just going to go crazy. I was going to say hog wild, but they don't like pigs, so I had to say that. Uh, but, you know, they're going to go nuts. And what's going to happen? Well, they're going to be out there killing and doing all kinds of terrible, horrible things, which they're already doing. And they haven't even been provoked all that much yet. Um, Although, you know, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have certainly killed a lot of Muslims in Libya and all the other places where we've been bombing the living daylights out of them. But, uh, you know, when it gets really, really bad, the Antichrist can come on the scene and he can say, okay, it's time to put an end to this. No more liberal protesting. I saw again, um, or was it uh, France, I think it is. Now they've passed a law in France whereby the police slash military guys that are on the streets they have to give two warnings, verbal warnings, to rioters, and now they can start to shoot them. You yell two warnings at the rioters, and if the rioters keep smashing stuff and throwing things at you, drop them dead. Just passed like today or the other day. I saw that. So, see, it's moving into this thing. This whole system is coming about. And the key player here, the Antichrist, can't show up until the body of Christ is gone. Because he shows up, the body of Christ says, hey, whoa, look, Antichrist messes up the plans. And by the way, you say, oh, the body of Christ doesn't have that kind of influence. Well, we have a lot more influence than you realize. A whole lot more influence. I've seen that thing. Okay, so um, why? Because the Lord's working through us. Understand that. You're nothing. I'm nothing. But God works through us. The body of Christ is here on the earth. So the body of Christ leaves, the Antichrist shows up. The Muslim situation is really bad at that point in time. And he says, okay, that's enough of this Muslim thing. We're going to go out. We're going to start slaughtering them. Yeah, it's going to be a new crusade. They're going to rebuild the temple. The whole thing, Bible prophecy is about to be fulfilled. Very exciting. Very exciting time to be in. So, just wanted to, you know, say a lot of that stuff because, you know, I'm thinking this and, you know, I realize that there's not much time left. And so I'm going, okay. I really want to get this stuff out. Should I do studies and things? And, and, you know, I think, you know, I just was like, you know what? I just need to make a video that's not a dedicated sermon teaching that just explains the purpose of this ministry, explains what I'm about, what I believe. And, uh, you know, I just was like, you know what? I need to get this thing out. And so there you go. That's the three purposes of King James Video Ministries. Uh, by God's grace, I say, well, by God's grace, I'll never back down. And I say that because I realize if the Lord just let the devil go and, you know, and everything, it could get real bad. Okay. Um, and I don't want that. So um, I'm going to stand firm on these three purposes of, of this ministry. Um, but it all ties back to Roman Catholicism. And if you've watched this whole thing and you're a Roman Catholic, I care about you. I really do. Um, don't take my attacks on Roman Catholicism as personal attacks on you. They're not. You're part of a satanic system. Okay, You're not the one true church. Jesus Christ said that the gates of hell wouldn't prevail against his church. All right, And Peter goes out and he preaches you know, that uh, Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Your current pope doesn't preach that anymore. Your current pope is an antichrist. Okay? 
So the gates of hell have prevailed against the Catholic Church. But I want to do a little bit more of a dedicated video on that. So uh, we're living in some crazy times, brethren. And, uh, you know, just please pray for the ministry. Please definitely do that. Don't think that we're strong. Brother Brian's such a strong Christian. He doesn't need prayer. Please. <laughs> uh, I need prayer. We need prayer desperately. So I'm going to keep yapping here, but I'll stop for now. That is it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to everybody for your kind words of encouragement. That does mean a lot to us. I don't always get to see all the comments. Um, again, you know, I see that. I get this all the time. People, you know, oh, he doesn't. He only answers the comments of people that send donations. <laughs> you know, it's like, what? You know, I'm just, you know, supposed to just like, I guess maybe I should have a computer like linked to my brain and I'll just like walk around just answering everybody's comments every day, you know. I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't even bother cooking or bathing or, you know, doing work around here and spending time with my wife or my son. I should just, like, be online all the time. Yeah. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.